Hey, my name is Trey and welcome to Learning the Toolbar, a series of tutorials where I show you the basics of how to use each tool in the Photoshop Toolbar. For this episode we'll be focusing on the first three tools, the Move tool, the Marquee tool, and the Lasso tool. And Before I get started, let me mention briefly that these tutorials are geared towards the entry-level Photoshop user. However, occasionally I'll mention concepts that might be beyond that skill level. So. When these things come up, I'll do my best to explain them in a way that makes sense. But if you feel like I didn't explain something quite as clearly as I could have, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. With that said, let's get started. Number one, the move tool. Now the move tool is used to move things. And you're gonna get a demonstration of that right now. I have this layer added uh, into my layers panel. Uh, it's just a basic icon that I've pulled in from Google and we're going to use it for some other uh, tools as well but for this uh, the most basic demonstration I can give of the move tool is to select it which you can see is selected and to click on the layer and to move it and you'll see a lot of these lines that are showing up as I move it those are letting me know that I'm aligned uh, on certain levels of the axis as far as the uh, the artboard is concerned and those can be viewed a little bit better if you hold control uh, it shows the exact dimensions that are around this but the move tool can be clicked on here in the tool bar or uh, say you're on this other tool right below it you can hit V on the keyboard and that'll get you right back to it. Another good use for the move tool is to select layers. Now obviously you can select layers back and forth uh, with your cursor in the layers panel, but say you wanted to do that on the canvas itself. All you have to do is go up to th this area, the top of your screen, and you're going to you can have this selected, which means you'll auto select anything that you click. Or, let me unlock this for a second. Or you can uncheck this and hold control while you click. And you see, you can't see my hand obviously, but I'm, I'm pressing on and off on the control button. And that lights up this auto select. I choose to work in this flow because it makes it easier not to accidentally click and move items but you do what works for you so I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate uh, this layer a few times and I can show you guys what I mean so all I'm doing is holding uh, the alt key on Windows and on a Mac it would be option I'm just clicking and dragging and that duplicates and so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to select each one of these and we're just going to move them slightly all over the place. And I'll show you why this is useful here in a second. Okay, so ignoring the fact that all of these look exactly the same and the names are relatively the same, if you open this up after you worked on it for, say, an hour or two hours, you open it up a day later, you're not going to know what layer is what. Unless you spend a lot of time going in and renaming this icon center and icon left, you're not going to know. And so one of the best features of the move tool is that you can select the layer by clicking on it. So I want this layer, I'm going to hold control, and it even gives you a bounding box so you can see what you're selecting click it and now I know that icon copy 2 is this one and I can move it freely and transform it any way I want. So that's a basic overview of the move tool and we'll go ahead and move on to our next tool. Number two on our list is the marquee tool. Now the marquee tool can be selected by clicking on the icon in the toolbar or by pressing M on your keyboard. So we're going to go ahead and select our marquee tool. And there are several versions of the marquee tool. There's rectangular, elliptical, single row, single column, 
we're just going to focus on the rectangular because all of these concepts pretty much apply to each different type. So these are used for making selections, creating shapes, masking, all of which I'm going to try to show you right now. So to make a selection, all you have to do is have your marquee tool selected, click on your canvas, and drag. There we go. These are called the dancing ants. And this signifies that everything within this is selected. So say we have our layer visible now. I can grab, going back to my move tool by hitting V, I can grab this image and move it to where, wherever I want. You can see the dancing ants are still around this selection. So I'm going to deselect this now with the keyboard shortcut Control D, and that'll be Command D on the Mac. This is particularly useful when you're trying to cut certain parts out of an image. So say I just wanted this house icon. I can grab it by making a selection around it, hitting V on my keyboard to go back to the Move tool, and I can move this selection outside of that. And if I wanted to, I can now go back to my move tool or my marquee tool, select this and hit delete on the keyboard. And now that's gone. So now I only have this part of my original image. So that edge is now deleted forever. Of course, unless I use the greatest invention Photoshop ever made, which was the undo. <laughs> On a Windows computer, the undo can be used by hitting Control, Alt, and Z at the same time. And so you want to hit it several times so that it goes back in steps. But now that we're back to this, I'm good, and I can keep moving forward. Now, if I wanted to mask instead of deleting, I would go into the tool, grab my elliptical, since we're working with a circle, and I can click and drag out. Now a tip when you're using this or even the, the rectangular version, if you hold shift, it's going to keep the aspect ratio the same. So you can see this is a perfect circle now. Another useful tip is to, while you're holding shift, hold the space bar and that allows you to move it. So in case you weren't very accurate, you tried to start over here and and you can't quite get it. A way around that is to hold shift, get the about the area that you want, then hold spacebar and simply move it over with your mouse and adjust as necessary. Now it looks like we have a pretty decent selection. I'm not going to worry about trying to get it too perfect. But we have a selection around this blue part of the image. And what we're going to do is we're going to mask this icon. And what the mask does is it creates a black and white image. And it says to the computer, whatever is white, I want you to show. And whatever is black, I want you not to show. And we can do that by making a selection and then clicking this little icon down here. And that will make a mask for us. And now you can see if we hold shift and click this, it will turn it on and off. But this basically makes it to where we don't delete anything from uh, our images. Since this is since we're working with pixels, we want to make sure that we don't do anything destructive. Uh, and if we erase part of this image and later on we decide, hey, I actually wanted those edges in there, there's nothing I can do to a certain point as, as far as I can undo. But if we have this and I say down the line, two hours later, I want those edges back. All I have to do is hit shift and click this and there they go. They're right back in, into my image. So that's a useful way to use the marquee tool and obviously there are many uses for it. Uh, these are just a few but if there's more that you'd like me to go into I can make a separate video on just uses for that. But with that said let's go ahead and move on. Number three is the lasso tool. Now the lasso tool is used for making selections much like the marquee tool. However, it allows you the freedom 
of selecting only what you want rather than having a predetermined shape. This is particularly useful for those of us with tablets, uh, but there are ways to use it with a mouse that can be effective. So I'm just going to demonstrate very quickly how to use the lasso tool. You're going to click any point on your canvas and you're going to drag across. And as you can see, I'm using a mouse currently, so the, line are gonna, the lines are going to look fairly shaky. Uh, and this is probably what you'll end up looking like when you use this as well. But it's a way to make a very quick selection rather than having to refine uh, too heavily. So for instance, I can make a very quick selection around this area and drag this out if I have the actual layer selected. And then we could go and refine that further. However, for those of you who use only a mouse and you don't have a tablet, they've made a tool within the lasso tool just for you. It's called the polygonal lasso tool. And this basically adds straight lines to the selection rather than tracing exactly where your mouse goes. So if I wanted to do the same thing and make a quick selection here, I would click, it goes in a straight line, click, 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 click. I just made a pentagon, and then we can move that out just as quickly as the other one. I actually recommend using the polygonal lasso tool, even if you're using a tablet, unless you have to get very specific with the areas that you're using. And of course, the last tool inside of the lasso tool folder is the magnetic lasso tool. I almost never use this. I actually don't think I've ever used this in a project of mine, but it's a good thing to know what it's useful for. In something like this, where I'm trying to trace around a shape, I basically am just clicking and then dragging it along the shape, and it allows me to get a very detailed selection, uh, even using a mouse. Let me just finish this up here. Of course, I let go, finish the selection, and I have a fairly accurate selection of just the house. Now, if I pull it out of this middle area, it's actually hard to see because it's white, but that gives you a basic demonstration of how it goes. And there's some uh, other parameters you can adjust. I don't get into all of these because you almost will never uh, have to use this. And if you do, you can look up a specific tutorial for this specific tool. But for 99% of things that you will end up using the lasso tool for, you're only going to be using the original or the polygonal. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. So that's it for the first episode of Learning the Toolbar. I hope this gets you one step closer to your goal of mastering Photoshop. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Thanks.